This is the last of four biblical studies concerning the Holy Ghost. And it brings this study, this biblical study, to a close. And believe me, folks, I cover a lot of territory on this one. And so I must really, really get right on it. Heavenly Father, I pray, I ask, that you open the hear ears of those who you want to hear. And open the eyes of those that you want to see. I ask these things, that the words, that my words being spoken here today, are the words that you desire to be heard among the land. I ask these things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Those are Jesus' words found in Matthew chapter 6, verses 33. Now please try to understand that the, that the earthly church attempts to represent the kingdom of God. However, you can go to church every day of your lifetime and still not be saved, nor, nor have received the real Holy Ghost. Because in accordance to the Bible, it is only by the obedient decision to, to Christ as your Lord and Savior that any individual may be received, may be saved, and receive the Holy Ghost. Any true Christian who is an, as an individual is seeking to know the kingdom of God through obedience in Christ Jesus may ask for and receive the real Holy Ghost. And now, I will do what I must. But for the most part, I will be speaking directly from the meat department of the inspired and written word of God. But this time, I will add only, only a little commentary. It may seem like a whole bunch of verses just stacked together, but listen to them carefully. I'll give the verse numbers so that you can write them down and and visit them in your books, in your own Bible there. We begin from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 13, where it says, That if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So you see, it's there for everyone who receive and are obedient to Christ. Those were the words of Jesus right there. Now let's go to Acts chapter 8, verses 14 through 17, where it reads, Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost because as yet he had not fallen among none of them, for only they had been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then, when the apostles laid their hands upon them, they received the Holy Ghost. Then we go, let's, go to, let's take a look at what's said in, in John chapter 7, uh, verse 39, where it says, He that believeth on me, now this is Jesus speaking here, he that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Goes on in parentheses by saying that this was spoke, Jesus was speaking of the spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now the Holy Ghost is, an, is a promise in earnest that is made available for all true believers. And, and that is done by being obedient unto Christ. And then Christ then is in you through the mystery of the Holy Ghost. 
as we look at uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 39, uh, sometimes used incorrectly, but we'll, we'll just take a look at the verse and let you make up your own mind. Acts chapter 2, verse 39, for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, just a little bit of commentary here I'm going to go into concerning the foreknowledge of the Holy Ghost. The Bible does reveal that a truthful acknowledgement and pronouncement leading to acceptance of the Holy Ghost may be needed in order to receive it. After all, if any child does not know about the Holy Ghost, to become suddenly indwelt, could be a difficult thing to understand, and it would be hard for them to wrap their mind around it, and it could place themselves in a very fearful condition, and God will not allow any child of his to suffer anything unnecessary. In Acts 19, verses 2 through 6, where it says, And he said unto them, he's asking the question, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And so he said, Unto what then were you baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, That John ver verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people, That they should believe on him which should come after him, and that is, on Christ Jesus. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. You see, here we have Paul coming. Paul was coming up against a couple of believers, and they had not heard of the Holy Ghost, even though they had been baptized unto you know a baptism of repentance. It is in the name of Christ Jesus that the Holy Ghost is given. And that's when the Holy Ghost came upon them. They had to recognize the Holy Ghost in, a, in essence, and they had to recognize that it was in the name of Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. And now there, there was this angelic messenger also who was said to speak to Mary. Remember Mary, the mother of Jesus? This was to tell her in advance what would happen before it came to be. Let's read from uh, Luke chapter 135. Let's look at this carefully. The angel answered and said unto her, That the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. You see, this, this, this angelic messenger was telling Mary before these events would unfold that this was going to happen okay so you see God doesn't want to do anything that's going to really just totally frighten someone out of their mind that's not God Satan will but that's not God's way of doing things I thank God for the Word of God that we know through the written Word of God that's been sustained over all these years that that God will not put anything on us that we're not prepared to handle, anything that he has not already prepared us to handle. Even Jesus also gave forewarning to his disciples concerning the Holy Ghost while he still walked with them. Look at this, uh, John, the book of John 20, verse 22, where it says, And when he had heard this, or when he had said this, excuse me, these are the words of Jesus, and when he had said this, he breathed upon them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. You see, this was preparing them to receive the Holy Ghost when it would be sent out from God the Father, which could only happen after he was glorified at the cross. It goes on in Acts 18, and it describes just a little bit, that ye shall receive power, and after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and in the uttermost parts of the earth. This was Jesus again speaking to his disciples after his 
death on the cross and his glorification, again, he was reminding them of the Holy Ghost that will come upon them and what they will be doing, empowered by the Holy Ghost. Now, the Holy Ghost is truly a spiritual indwelling, where it reads in uh, Luke chapter 1, 41, says that it came to pass, and when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. There, there's, there's an identity thing there. And it goes on. We'll go on to discuss that the Holy Ghost becomes a minister on the inside. I'm talking about spiritual indwelling. Indwelling becomes a minister on the inside of all true believers, thereby it fulfills and indwells believers. You see, the Holy Ghost reflects the power of truth from God giving utterance and remembrance of Christ. And the true Holy Ghost power is from God and carried to us by His love, His wisdom, and His knowledge. Now this ministry of the Holy Ghost reveals some knowledge to us of the Lord's plan through a supernatural means and guidance. I use guidance because even though sometimes things may happen that we may not know the reason for, you know, some event, we might not know the reason for it when it occurs. And sometimes we may never know the reason for it until after we hear it from him. But all that the Holy Ghost does or will do is directed toward the fulfillment of the Lord's plan. Let me say that again. All that the Holy Ghost does or will do is directed toward the fulfillment of the Lord's plan and not the plans of men. And as we mentioned in a previous epistle, there are those who believe in and practice forms of witchcraft, believe in familiar spirits, wizardry. Now, these are not things that a true Christian can have. Not a true Christian. Now, there are fakers out there that, you know, do the pseudo-spiritual thing. And so we must be very, very careful about any special blessings or gifts or even special words. Yes, I've heard that all the time. I have a special word for you. <laughs> for uh, We'll take a look at uh, the book of 1 Timothy, uh, chapter 4, one, verses 1 and 2, where it says that the Spirit speaks expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, and having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Oh, I've got to come up with a way of saying this. This is this is strictly off the cuff here, folks. You see, when the the when the spirit of the antichrist, is, the spirit of the antichrist is among us even now. You got to realize that the spirit of the antichrist is among us even now, and the spirit of the antichrist doesn't really have to do a whole lot. Because what's happening is we're moving farther and farther and farther away from biblical truth and godly standards and principles. And the farther away we get from God, the closer we are to the spirit of the Antichrist. And the spirit of the Antichrist is just sitting there watching us. Oh, that's all he's got to do is just sit there and watch us, folks. Christians! We must remain watchful at all times at all spiritual blessings, or what some even refer to as special words, from anyone, including those in leadership. No, no, especially those in church leadership. Their words must line up or adhere to a biblical, spiritual, scriptural truth and principle. And if they do not, then you as an individual must realize that the devil might be in charge right there where he should never be. And I will say this very, very carefully. When the devil has overrun or completely taken over control of the earthly church, run, walk, and pray unceasingly, for then is the time short. Don't take my word for it. Check out what Daniel had to say about it. But let's get back to the subject at hand. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost that enters believers in the spiritual sense. 
And the baptism of the Holy Ghost is the only baptism that anyone should be truly concerned with. You see, we can do all kinds of, you know, swimming around in the water, sprinkle, tinkle, winkle, or dunk, whatever you want to call it. Doesn't make any difference if you are not obedient unto Christ Jesus. Because that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and that's the only baptism that anyone should be overly concerned with. The rest of them are just a baptism in repentance and turning away. And if it doesn't receive, if you don't receive the Holy Ghost when you're baptized, like in a church baptism pool or down at the waterfront, whatever, don't be concerned. Maintain a posture of obedience unto Christ Jesus. And when God says you are ready to receive it, you will receive it. Now let's take a look at what John the Baptist, the second witness to Jesus as the Messiah, told us. And, uh, the book of John, chapter 1, 33, verse 33. He says, And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptize with the Holy Ghost. Now, what I must enter into here is, is with a, a little bit of a discussion of someone's idea or a religious restriction on how to receive the Holy Ghost. Because there are those that believe that the Holy Ghost is only passed from a man to a man through the laying on of hands. And here is what the written word says on that subject. We go to Acts, the book of Acts, chapter 4, verse 31, where it reads, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now let me go back in for that again and say that again. And when they had prayed, and the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Don't forget the boldness part, folks. Christians these days are told, don't you can't be bold. No, no, no. You can't speak out. Mm -mm, mm -mm. That's, that's, that's not smart. But that's what the word of God says. They spoke the word of God with boldness and the power of the Holy Ghost. But let's go on. Let's take a look at it just a little bit. They, it reads that they were all filled, all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke the word of God in boldness. Did you get that? They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. It does not read, one got it, and then he passed it on to another, and then he passed it on to another. No, it reads, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Don't take my word for it. Look it up for yourself. Let's go to uh, Acts chapter 10, 44 through, 30, or 44 through 45, where it says that while Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them which heard the word. And they, even of the circumcision, which believed, were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because on the Gentiles was also poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. That's the rest of us, folks. But let's take a look at this. In Acts 10 there, they that heard received. They that heard and acknowledged, they received. They received the Holy Ghost when it was preached, when they heard, when they accepted, then they received it. It wasn't passed on. It doesn't say that uh, Peter was running around in circles laying hands on everybody. It says they received it on them which heard the word. Again, Acts 11, chapter 11, 15 and 16. It says, As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them, as was on us in the beginning. In other words, the same way as that one that I just read up there from Acts 2. As I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell upon them as on us in the beginning. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how it had said that John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. That's from Acts 11, 15 through 16. Let's take a look at Acts 15, 8 and 9. Acts 15, 8 and 9, where it reads, And God, which know the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, 
even as he did unto us, and put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now then, what I believe on this subject, concerning the laying on of hands and the passing on of the Holy Spirit from man to man, now here I'll go into this. The passing on uh, by laying on the hands can be like a ceremony or a pre-commitment to receive the Holy Ghost. After all, the true Holy Ghost is received only when God sends it to the believer. For any individual to receive the Holy Ghost, there first is a need to come to the cross of Christ. You must be a real Christian to receive the real Holy Ghost. Anybody can receive the pseudo-spirit from Satan. But you must be a real Christian to receive the real Holy Ghost. And this requires personal obedience into repentance and the forgiveness of Christ. An obedient, repentant heart also does not mean bringing one into oneself into perfection, but rather that the willingness to turn and walk away from sins and the lifestyles of sins captivity that has been or may be at work within their life. A truly obedient heart remains repentant and obedient throughout the transformed life founded in Christ Jesus' love and fostered by the Holy Ghost. Let's go to Acts chapter 5, verses 31 and 32, where it reads, Him, in parentheses Christ, has God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, for to give repentance unto Israel and the forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses of these things, and so also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. Now you see, here's the link. We are his witnesses. Remember that why I spoke about boldness before? We are his witnesses in boldness. And it says also that so is the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that obey him. In other words, who God gives to those who obey God. How do you obey God? You come to the cross of Jesus. Come to the cross of Jesus. Acts 2.38, it reads, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. That's coming to the cross of Jesus. Isn't it? Let me repeat that again. I'll start all over again. When Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Christ Jesus for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can't get it much plainer than that, folks. No commentary needed there. Acts chapter 3, 19 and 20 says, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing, refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you. You see that? There's a link there. Repent, 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 be converted, repent, be baptized, repent, receive the Holy Ghost. All these things are linked together in obedience it goes on to read uh, in Acts chapter 17, 30 through 31, where it says that in the times of this ignorance, speaking of times before, speaking to the Gentiles here, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent, because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world into righteousness by that man whom he has ordained whereof he has given assurance unto all men that he has risen from the dead, the only one that ever has. Do you have an obedient and a repentant heart? Do you really know down deep inside that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and that whosoever believe on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you should accept it, your salvation is a personal gift from God the Father to you personally 
and individually. For it is by grace that you are saved through faith, and not that of yourselves. It is the gift of God, and not the works of men, least any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. From Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 10. Remember in the beginning I opened with, with the words, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Is your heart turned toward the kingdom of God now? Have you been led astray and followed after other spiritual influences, worshipped other gods, maybe even having worshipped the church? a provision of God rather than the one true God. If so, turn away now from all forms of spiritual idolatry. Turn away from all your idols. Lay them down right now, right now, even today, at the foot of the cross of Christ Jesus. Admit to all your personal sins. Ask for forgiveness and receive Christ Jesus into your heart as your Lord, the director, the ruler of your thoughts and actions, and as your Savior. And remember that even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Christ Jesus unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference, for all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God. That was Romans 3, chapter 3, 22 and 23. You see, only through Christ Jesus may all these things be accomplished in you. There is no other way. There is no other way that is acceptable unto God the Father. For as it is written in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Let the Lord Christ Jesus be your only spiritual influence, your personal teacher, your helper, your healer. May the Holy Ghost begin the work of the spiritual transformation within you, that you may know that your eternity rests peacefully with God. Do it now, in the name of Christ Jesus, the Son of the living God. Pray with me. Pray on your knees. Pray standing up. Pray on your face. But pray right now. Father in heaven, I am a sinner. And I know that there is nothing that I, nor any other, can do to save me. I ask that Christ Jesus be my personal Lord and Savior from here now unto forever. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart and change me into that what you want me to be. We ask these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. <laughs>